Hi, mystery writers. Welcome to Write a Killer Mystery, where we talk about making a good mystery great. And today I want to talk about mystery writer stumbling blocks. Uh, first, I want to thank my patrons on Patreon for their continued support. It means a lot. If you would like to support these videos and my writing, there's a link in the description below. All right, so mystery writer stumbling blocks. Things that can go wrong in a mystery. Writing a mystery is challenging. You have a puzzle to create, a detective to solve the puzzle, a victim, a villain, and conflict for your protagonist as they solve the puzzle. There's a lot of things to cover. And it's easy to fall in love with your story, creating exciting challenges for your protagonist, and creating red herrings, and leading your reader on a path to discovery and revelation. With so many components in your novel, it's easy to get lost along the way. The character in your head may not come to life on the page. The series of conflicts may be just that without raising the stakes to build tension. The crime scene may be unrealistic or the story plods along without a twist. All of, thing, all of these are things you need to overcome in order to make your, your story exciting and believable. So, with all the challenges that are involved in writing a mystery, you may stumble along the way. And if you're an aspiring mystery writer, here are some things to avoid as you create your mystery. Okay, first is too many subplots and a confusion of events. There's just a lot going on. Um, you may think that adding conflict events and subplots make your story suspenseful and interesting, and they do. However, too many can confuse your reader. For instance, conflict just for conflict doesn't ne necessarily build suspense, and that element that gets the readers turning the pages. And many subplots Divert your reader from the main mystery story. That's why they're there. They're mystery readers. So that needs to be your major, major storyline. So when you introduce conflict for your protagonist sleuth, make sure that the conflict is related to solving the mystery puzzle. That's the big, the big goal that your detective has. And the conflict needs to come from your detective trying to reach that goal. Um, a fight scene, just to have a fight scene, doesn't add to your story. Your reader relies on your sleuth to help them solve the puzzle. And as the story progresses, raise the stakes for each conflict and make the consequence to your character significant to solving the mystery puzzle. Um, subplots, too, drive the mystery puzzle. Your sleuth may have a love interest, but make sure that their encounters disrupt or add to the main story. You always want to tie your subplot into the main story. Now, to one caveat, if you are writing multiple points of view in the tradition of P.D. James and Elizabeth George and Anne Cleves, make sure that all those backstories raise questions about the present mystery puzzle, that they all tie together, leading to the solution of who actually is the culprit. Okay. So that's one. Lots of confusion and conflicts, um, but they're they're kind of outside of the story. And then another, this is especially true for beginning mystery writers, your main characters are cliches. So if you want your reader to be excited about your book, you want to make your characters distinctive by giving them unique traits. 
um, that still fit the mystery genre. It doesn't take much reading in the genre to find detective traits that are almost tropes but shouldn't be. All right, so here's some to avoid. Uh, the hardcore alcoholic detective. That has definitely been overworked. A detective with relationship issues. A detective who possesses some sort of, you know, superpower, some supernatural power. A sexy female detective who has, who has to make a choice between two love interests. A rookie detective partnered with a veteran detective. So, as you're thinking about who your sleuth is, be inventive. Um, invent a character that differs from these cliches. And who knows, you may set a trend. Um, think of Anne Cleve's Vera Stanhope. Now there's a whole new cliche of the cantankerous middle-aged female detective. So, be inventive with your main character. Readers love characters who are distinctive and have traits and talents that they really haven't encountered before. So you want to have a new vision of how uh, who your detective is, I think is the best way to say that. Okay, another thing which just basically involves research is unrealistic crime scenes or procedures. So most mysteries include a killing. And so you need to know the instrument of death, like a weapon or poison. You need to know how that works. It takes a lot of effort to stab somebody. Um, and toxic poisons can react in minutes or they may take hours or even a day. So you need to know your weapon. Make it realistic. Take the time to research how physical blows or bullet wounds affect the body, depending on um, what the cause of death is. But you need to know enough about that to make your story realistic because you're creating evidence for your detective and for your reader. Um, mystery writer J.B. Clemens advised, to make your crime seems more realistic, you must do some research. Find out the what's, why's, and how's of crime. And that's really important. If you're writing a mystery, you need to know about crimes. So also along the same vein, if your detective is a member of law enforcement, know the basic procedures of crime investigation. For instance, if they're in a large city, um, They'll be out interviewing witnesses, but they won't be doing any fancy forensic evaluations. There's a whole team of other people who do that. Um, so uh, make sure you make your law enforcement person realistic. And one of the best ways you can do that is to get to know someone in law enforcement so you understand how the procedures work and it's different depending on what branch of law enforcement it is whether it's a police department or the sheriff's department or the fbi so make sure that you do your research to make your characters realistic and to make them um, work within the confines and restraints of whatever their procedures are all right and then another another stumbling block is there's an I call it an absence of twist logic. Um, you definitely want suspense and surprises in your story because to keep your reader involved and caring about your characters and turning the pages, but your twists that set your protagonist in a new direction must come from the story. Your protagonist has to be proactive. A deus ex machina, which means a god out of a machine, which comes from old um, Elizabethan drama, um, can happen in the form of another character interpreting a clue in the middle of the story. It doesn't have to be at the end. Um, so that just doesn't work. And it's as disappointing in the middle 
as it is in the end. It's your main character, your protagonist, is the one who needs to solve the problem. But when you create a twist, you want the logic of your story to be what motivates that twist, how it all comes together. So it's like, how is your character overlooked an important clue? Um, or how did a suspect set them on the wrong path? A twist must evolve naturally from what came before in the story. So, for instance, let me give you an idea. You have an idea for an exciting twist, but somehow it doesn't relate to what's happened before in your story. In that case, you need to go back and sprinkle in clues and foreshadowings and interactions with other characters that hint at that new twist that's coming because twists out of the blue don't work. Um, readers like surprises, but they don't like to be tricked. So any anything that just seems to fall out of the sky um, is is going to disrupt your reader. So make sure your twist actually follows your story logic. Okay, so those are four big ones on a combination of research and building strong character backgrounds will help you write a mystery that has a strong storyline and avoids those cliches and is realistic and creates surprises that are organic to your story. All right, that's pretty much uh, what I had to say today, and I hope that helps. Uh, stumbling, stumbling box um, can happen. I mean, I've had it where I thought of a twist and then I had to go back and kind of fix things that came before. So the twist made sense within the story. Um, and then, um, Write a Killer Mystery is my online course for beginning writers focused on writing a mystery and it helps you avoid things like the stumbling blocks I talked about today. It starts you from your story idea and helps you create your characters and build those backgrounds that makes things integral in your story and helps you with planning the story outline and working with the setting, working with uh, law enforcement procedures. All those things are in Write a Killer Mystery. So I, if you want to check it out, the link is in the description below. That's it for today. If you like this, be sure to subscribe and click that little notification bell so you will find the next episode of Write a Killer Mystery. Thank you.